Number 7. The Gunilda Named after an old Germanic name meaning war, the Gunilda was a luxury steam yacht that sank in Lake Superior in 1911. She was built in Scotland in 1897 for an English owner. She was 195 feet long and had a speed of 14 knots. In 1903, the Gunilda was bought by William L. Harkness, a wealthy oil baron from Ohio. He took the yacht on many voyages around the world, visiting exotic places like Cuba and Panama along the way. He also brought her to the Great Lakes in 1910, where he enjoyed fishing and hunting. But on August 11, 1911, while sailing near Rossport, Ontario, the Gunilda ran aground on McGarvey Shoal, which is on the northern side of Copper Island. Harkness tried to save his yacht with the help of a tugboat, but she rolled over and sank to the bottom of the lake. Defeated, Harkness left Lake Superior and never returned. The Gunilda remained on the lake bed for decades until she was rediscovered in 1967 by divers. She was still intact with her gilded hull, her wooden deck, and her brass fittings. She was a time capsule of the early 20th century, a testament to the elegance and craftsmanship of her era. From then on, she became a popular destination for divers who wanted to see her beauty and mystery. She also became the subject of several failed salvage attempts. In 1980, Jacques Cousteau filmed the wreckage of the Gunilda with a diving saucer, but his team didn't attempt to raise her. Today, the Gunilda is still resting in 270 feet of water, protected by the Ontario Heritage Act. She's considered one of the most beautiful shipwrecks in the world, and one of the best preserved examples of a steam yacht. She's also a reminder of the dangers and challenges of sailing on Lake Superior, where fog, rocks, and storms can claim even the finest of vessels. Number 6. The Black Sea's Hidden Shipwrecks Imagine finding a shipwreck that's so well preserved that you can see the chisel marks on the wood, the coils of rope on the deck, and the cargo in the hold. Now imagine not finding one, but dozens of such shipwrecks spanning over 2,500 years of history. That's exactly what happened to a team of sailors and scientists who were exploring the floor of the Black Sea for clues about how ancient humans adapted to rising sea levels. They were using sonar and underwater robots to map the seabed and collect samples, but they also stumbled upon something unexpected. 41 shipwrecks from different cultures from the Roman, Medieval, Ancient Greek, and Byzantine eras. But how did these shipwrecks survive so long in such good condition? The answer lies in the unique water chemistry of the Black Sea. Below 492 feet, the water has no oxygen and very little salt. This means that there's no life and no corrosion. Anything that sinks to this depth stays frozen in time. The team was amazed by their discovery and decided to document and study the shipwrecks using advanced technology. They created stunning 3D images of some of the vessels and even 3D printed some of the artifacts. They also learned more about the history and trade of the region by analyzing the ships and their contents. The team named their project Black Sea Map for Maritime Archaeological Project and continued their survey until 2017. And by then, they had found 60 shipwrecks in total, making it one of the largest collection of shipwrecks ever discovered. The Black Sea Map wrecks are a treasure trove of information and beauty for archaeologists and divers alike. They're also a reminder of the rich and diverse maritime history of the Black Sea. Number 5. The Mary Rose The Mary Rose was a warship that belonged to King Henry VIII of England, the guy who had six wives and liked to chop their heads off. He loved his ship more than he loved his women, but sadly, it didn't last very long. Between 1509 and 1511, the Mary Rose was constructed in Portsmouth. It was a big and impressive vessel, measuring about 150 feet long and weighing about 600 tons. It had four masts, three decks, and up to 80 guns. It could also carry about 500 men, including sailors, soldiers, and gunners. The Mary Rose was Henry's flagship, which means it was the most important ship in his navy. He used it to fight against his enemies, mainly the French. The Mary Rose fought in three wars and won several battles. It was a fearsome sight on the sea, with its red and white Tudor colors and its carved wooden roses. 
But the Mary Rose also had some problems. She was very heavy and slow, and she needed a lot of wind to move. She also had a high center of gravity, which made her unstable and prone to tipping over. Henry tried to fix these issues by rebuilding the ship in 1536, and he also added more guns, more decks, and more weight, which turned out to be a horrible mistake. On July 19, 1545, the Mary Rose met her fate. It was sailing in the Solent, a channel near Portsmouth, when it encountered a large French fleet. Henry watched from the shore as his ship prepared for battle. The Mary Rose fired its guns at the enemy and tried to turn around, but during all this, something went wrong. Some say that the ship was hit by a French cannonball, but others say that it was overloaded with too many men and guns. There's even those who believe that it was caught by a sudden gust of wind. But whatever the reason may be, the ship tilted to one side and water rushed into its open gun ports. The Mary Rose then sank within minutes, taking almost all of its crew with it. Henry was heartbroken by the loss of his favorite ship. He offered a reward for anyone who could raise it, but no one succeeded. The Mary Rose remained on the seabed floor for over 400 years, forgotten and covered with mud. But in 1971, a team of divers found the wreck of the Mary Rose and decided to bring it back to the surface. It took them 11 years of hard work and careful planning, but on October 11, 1982, they finally lifted the ship out of the water in front of millions of TV viewers. The Mary Rose was then taken to a museum in Portsmouth, where it's still displayed today. It's one of the best preserved ships from the 16th century and a treasure trove of Tudor history. It has over 19,000 artifacts, including weapons, tools, clothes, games, musical instruments, and even a dog skeleton. The Mary Rose is a fascinating story of triumph and tragedy, of glory and disaster. And if you ever get a chance to visit it, don't miss out on the opportunity. Just make sure you don't get too close to the gun ports. Number four, the mystery of the HMS Terror. The Franklin Expedition was a British naval mission that left in 1845 to look for the Northwest Passage, a route from Europe to Asia through the Arctic. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but it turned out to be a disaster. The two ships, HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, got trapped in the ice and never came back. The 129 crew members on board the vessels also disappeared without a trace. For over a hundred years, people wondered what happened to them and their ships. Some theories suggested they died of hunger, sickness, or even cannibalism. But others believe they were killed by polar bears, Inuit hunters, or supernatural forces, although there's no evidence to support any of these claims. That all changed, though, in 2014 when a team of archaeologists found the wreck of the HMS Erebus in a remote bay off King William Island. And two years later, they found the HMS Terror in a very unexpected place, 60 miles south of where they thought it would be. But how did it end up there? Did some of the crew try to sail it to a better place? Or did it move with the currents? For now, at least, there are no answers. But we do know that the ship is in remarkable condition. It still has its masts, rigging, and swivel guns, as well as its cabins, furniture, and personal items. But the vessel also has its secrets. The discovery of the HMS Terror is one of the most fascinating and significant shipwrecks ever found. It teaches us a lot about the history of exploration, the difficulties of the Arctic, and the lives of the men who risked everything to find a new route to Asia. It also raises new questions and mysteries that we hope to answer someday. Number three, Baltic Sea Shipwreck. A team of researchers has made a remarkable discovery in the Baltic Sea, a shipwreck that's almost perfectly preserved after 500 years. The ship, which dates back to the 15th or 16th century, is a rare and valuable find that could potentially shed light on the history and culture of the Age of Discovery. The shipwreck was found in 2019 by a team of researchers who were mapping the seafloor of the Baltic Sea using sonar and underwater robots. The ship is about 52 and a half feet long and 16 and a half feet wide, 
and it lies at a depth of 394 feet. It has a high mast, a bow spirit, and a transom stern, which are typical features of ships from that era. The vessel is in such good condition that it looks like it just sank yesterday. However, the shipwreck also poses a mystery. Nobody knows where it came from or what it was doing in the Baltic Sea. The researchers haven't found any clues or artifacts that could reveal its origin or purpose. It could be a merchant ship, a warship, or something entirely different. It could have originated from Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Poland, or any other country that had access to the Baltic Sea in the 15th or 16th centuries. The researchers hope to find out more about the shipwreck by conducting further investigations and analyses. They also plan to share their findings with the public and the scientific community. The wreck is a treasure trove of information that could enrich our understanding of the past and inspire our imagination for the future. Number 2. The SAS Somerset Have you ever wondered what it was like to be a sailor in World War II? Or how ships were built and maintained back then? Well, you can find out by visiting the SAS Somerset, a historic ship that's now a museum in Cape Town. The SAS Somerset was constructed in the English town of Blythe in 1941. It was initially given the name HMS Barcross, and it had a special job to do to lay and protect nets that stopped enemy submarines from sneaking into harbors and waterways. HMS Barcross and its twin sister, HMS Barbreak, traveled to South Africa in 1942 and joined the South African Navy. They then changed their names to HMSAS Barcross and HMSAS Barbreak to fit in better. After the war, the South African government bought HMS Barcross and gave it a new name, SAS Somerset, after a brave horse that had carried a man named Dick King on a long and heroic ride in 1842. The SAS Somerset had many different tasks over the years, such as dumping old ammunition into the sea, rescuing sunken ships and laying oil pipes. It also got some upgrades, like new boilers and an engine. It was a hard-working and versatile ship that served its country well. The SAS Somerset retired in 1986 and became a museum in 1988. It's now parked at the Victoria and Alfred Waterfront in Cape Town, where it welcomes visitors who want to learn more about its history and see what it looks like on the inside. It's one of only four museum ships that are still floating in South Africa, and it's also one of the oldest surviving naval vessels in the world. It's truly a treasure of maritime history that shows the role of the South African Navy in World War II and beyond. And at number one, the Khufu ship. Did you know that the oldest ship in the world isn't a Viking longship, a Roman galley, or a Chinese junk, but an Egyptian solar bark? That's right. The Khufu ship is the world's oldest intact ship and was buried with the pharaoh Khufu in his pyramid over 4,000 500 years ago. The Khufu ship is a solar bark, which means that it was used to carry the pharaoh's soul across the sky with the sun god Ra. It's 142 feet long and 19 feet wide, and it's made of cedar wood from Lebanon. It also has no mast or sail, but it does have 12 oars and a steering oar at the stern. The Khufu ship was discovered in 1954 by an archaeologist named Kamal El Malach who found it in a sealed pit next to the Great Pyramid of Giza. It took him and his team 14 years to carefully dismantle and reassemble the ship, which was made of 1,224 pieces. They also found ropes, tools, pottery, and a model boat in the pit. The Khufu ship is now on display at the Grand Egyptian Museum near Cairo, where you can admire its ancient craftsmanship and learn more about its history and symbolism. It's a remarkable example of how the ancient Egyptians honored their rulers and their gods. If you ever owned a ship, what would you name it? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.